Buying a house is a fun and exciting time for a lot of people, but what it also can be is extremely expensive and very draining. And this is going to heavily depend on who you have in your corner to help you navigate the home buying process. You see, when you embark on this journey, you have the ability to decide who you employ to help you reach your goal. So if you're watching this video, you're more than likely a veteran who is navigating the VA loan process. So it's not only important that you're working with a VA knowledgeable lender like me and my team, but also working with a VA knowledgeable real estate agent to help you navigate this journey. Everyone knows that friend or uncle that shows up to every family gathering that says that they're a real estate agent and also tells you to let them know when you're ready to buy a house. Come on, I know you know someone like that. I do too. And what we unfortunately do is oftentimes rely on them because they're friend and family. But the problem here is you're about to use a person who doesn't practice every single day the thing that you're making this massive investment in, which can cause a lot of stress. And I've heard horror stories or just bad experiences from people who have shared those stories with me after buying a home. So in this video, I decided to bring on somebody who is not only smarter than me, but also is somebody who is a very knowledgeable VA real estate agent and also a veteran himself who is going to provide you with some key insights into what to prepare yourself for. This was a little bit more of an interview style that we did. We sat down earlier this week and I asked him some key questions. So you'll see us in a little bit of a different setting than where I'm at right now. But another thing to keep in mind is our audio wasn't exactly the best. Mine was actually, my microphone was acting up a little bit. So I do apologize if the audio is a little off, but I still felt like the information was extremely valuable and I wanted to still share that here. So check it out. So I have my buddy here, Danny Cuevas. What's up, man? Brother? What's up? I don't know if I'm smarter than anything uh, yeah. or anyone. No, but no, um, but I, I definitely care. Okay. I think that's I think that's the key thing. Well, that's the important to... thing of yeah, why, yeah. why you're here. Yeah, yeah. So I, I care a lot. I wanted to have you here. We've we've done a couple of things together in the yeah. past. Um, you're not a stranger to the channel. You've been on the channel a couple times with me. Yeah, I so think so. It's it's been long past due. That's why I wanted to do this with Let's you as do well. It. And so I wanted to start off by kind of talking a little bit about one, you're a veteran yourself. So you not only have that experience of being a real estate agent, but also being a veteran who, who has purchased a home. So I want to ask, how was your experience of having bought homes in the past through not only your own experience as an adult? I know you've talked about and shared about your family's experiences and what are some things that you've maybe learned from in that that you carry over into your real estate business? I think that one of the main things is like what I just mentioned is, is caring a lot you have to pay attention to what your craft really is. And what you're doing in this channel is, is a prime example, is figuring out your path and how can I help those people the best I can. There's a saying that I heard from Ed Milet, is you are best suited to help the person that you used to be. And That's I good. that it's a That's really, really, really good, good one. Too. It's a really good one. And who I used to be was someone who lost their home when I was 15 and I couldn't do anything about it. My parents didn't know what to do about it. They weren't financially literate as they are today so it became a situation where they lost their house and that was really unfortunate and we felt like i felt like i was homeless right so what what could we have done to be different that's what initially got me into thinking about real estate right became a marine uh didn't want to go to college so i just became a marine right. instead okay. right as we sometimes do and a, a, a lot of the experiences from the Marine Corps brought in a lot of just leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this business is you're leading the way for, for people because they don't know what they don't know. And it's up to you. They're, they're relying on you mm -hmm. when it comes down That's to right. it. And if you don't know what it is that you're doing, then it becomes a situation where you're doing a disservice. But you don't like, uh, and, and I think this is an encouragement for, for people who are agents that or maybe getting into the business, they want to maybe help out more veterans, whatever it may be. What I'm saying is that you, you want to be a problem solver. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You you have to be aware that you don't know what you don't know. I, I use that phrase a lot because you want to be as open as possible. You don't want to be the, the person that's like, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I already know about that. I already know about this. Like, sometimes it, it takes a little bit more effort and yeah. you, you like. Yes, I, that, that is the fact, you know, you're able to maybe, maybe if we're having an issue with, um, I don't know, appraisal, so yeah, we, we have a way out of it. And there's multiple routes that we can take, like Tidewater, for example, yeah. for, for VA. So they, 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 being able to maneuver those things, yeah. Let's backtrack and tell me about when someone is making a decision on who they're going to use to represent them. I want to also talk about some things that people can ask, like questions that you would say someone should be asking, especially a veteran that mm -hmm. is going to be 
using you or some other agent around the country. And, and if you guys don't know this, we I have a network of real estate agents around the country of 18,000 real estate agents that can I can connect you with that are VA knowledgeable. So if you want to work with a VA knowledgeable realtor, shameless plug, I can connect you with somebody in your local market who's maybe not as smart as Danny, but they know their way around the VA. Definitely like, not so as cool. Not as cool. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, not, not, not as cool. cool. A little weird. I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. But um, what are some questions that they can ask? Like if they're not going to connect with somebody in our network that you would say are some key questions that you should say somebody should be asking a real estate agent before they make a decision to have them represent them? Um, ask them their experience. Like, what do you know about the VA loan? Uh, who are the lenders that you use? If you're approaching a, a, a real estate agent first, mm -hmm. like, which I don't usually recommend, I recommend the opposite. You, know, okay. you, you find a VA knowledgeable lender because I think that the lender is more important through the process than a realtor and then ask for a suggestion from that lender who do who do you recommend right. so like call someone like yourself and then hey who do you recommend to help me with buying a property okay. who's who's a real estate agent that you trust but some key questions like what is your experience um can you give me a referral of someone that you've helped and i can speak to that person and then i would speak to that person and say who do you know that has used this realtor that I can talk to because they're going to give you their best client. Right. Like I would send you to my best client that I've given the best experience. But if they, they probably know someone else that I've helped and that would give me a second perspective, mm -hmm. an extra layer of knowledge and like, okay, yes, I do trust this person. This person is someone that does help out a lot of veterans because it were, it, it's a big, small community, the veteran community. Yeah. So, it's like it's a small world, but it's also a, a, a lot of people that, that that are gonna get involved. So those, I, I would think that those are the kind of the key questions that anyone can ask. But then you can you can go like you can dive right into it. It's like, do you know what my funding fee is gonna be? Yeah. And then if they know what the funding fee is, it's a great, then it's a great test question. Yeah. Yeah. Th then then they'll know the the next question to ask, which mm -hmm. is, are you rated? Yes or no? Or what was your service like? You know, are you a reservist? Are you active duty? Are you out? Are you have, do you have honorable discharge? Those are some key questions that, to ask to lead them to, to know whether or not you're going to be even paying the funding fee. That's a great question. Another question I, I would think, like, especially in Texas, is like, am I exempt? Mm -hmm. Am I tax exempt? Yeah. Um, because there's not only the, the tax exemptions for just the state tax, but there's you have the water improvement tax, you have everything yeah. that that you can get exempt but some water improvements they they're not exempt right so you have to understand the how how the taxes are written how mm -hmm. everything is organized things like that so that you know a, if you're 100 percent rated you're not gonna have to pay property tax state property tax but you're gonna have to pay that pit yeah that's a good point and let me ask this on because a lot of veterans, especially now with having what's happened with the NAR settlement, mm -hmm. it's not just veterans, it's a lot of individuals who are questioning the value in having re representation as a real estate agent. It's been like that since the beginning of time, I think, mm -hmm. since having a realtor was, was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I find it a little bit comical because I use I use the reference, you know, um, I wonder how long people have been questioning whether or not they need an attorney mm -hmm. um, or questioning whether or not that they uh, should hire a doctor. Yeah. You know, um, it's having a professional in your corner. Other than the very general, I can't help myself with the sarcasm. I want to kind of get into like more high level conversation about the importance of having that representation that knows what they're doing because you're not just showing them a house. Mm -hmm. You're not just driving them to a property and saying, hey, let me know when you want to make an offer. What are some other things that people maybe don't see that they misunderstand for yeah. things that aren't actually that important? So, so I would say that like, and this is like general real estate mm -hmm. agent stuff and something that I did with you, right? Yeah. So and let me stop you there. Okay. That's because I know where you're going. Yeah. It's because he says it's something that he did with me is because I went and looked at a property recently. We was about a month ago, a little over a month ago. I went and toured a property myself that I was considering buying for me and my family. It wasn't, we were not just joking around. So I called Danny. And I said, hey, Danny, can you come help me show the property, sh get into the property so that way I can check out this house? He's like, cool. So since we got to the house, he's like, you know what? Since I'm here, I'm going to treat you how I treat an actual client of mine. 
and I'll let you go from there because yeah. it, it opened my eyes to some things as a buyer that I think we make when we are a consumer versus when we are the professional. And that's why I wanted to preface that to lead into what you were yeah. to say because it's really yeah, yeah. good. I loved what you did. This, this is like general real estate yeah, yeah. agent. Like you'll know whether or not you have a great agent uh, because me as a salesperson, I am not selling you into the home. Mm -hmm. I'm selling you out of the home. That's, that's my purpose as a real estate agent. I'm trying to find problems. And the way that I said it is that you're going to have dreamy eyes over this house. Mm -hmm. You're going to envision your family here. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to see yourselves living here. You're going to start planning on where things are going to go. Hey, my couch is going to go here. My TV is going to go here. You're going to have dreamy eyes. And my, <laughs> my purpose yeah, yeah. is to bring you back down to earth and say, no, there's a problem here. There's a problem there. After five years, that's going to be broken. And my, my job is to really find the problems and give you some realization behind home ownership mm -hmm. so that you understand what it is to not only own the property, but own it over an extended amount of time. Because I don't want to have to yeah. sell you another house. Yeah. Like, honestly, I don't. Like, I want you to find that perfect home so that you're there for a very long time, create awesome memories. And and then I, I go there, we have some barbecue, and then, like, you, you, have, you have a great time in the house. What, what are some other things that you would say, maybe if you have, like, one or two things that are extremely important for a veteran to consider when going into the home buying process of obviously this let's say i'm already pre-approved mm -hmm. i'm working with someone like yourself as as a va knowledgeable realtor like what are some additional things that you think veterans should be equipped with going into the home buying process to help them make that more informed decision when it comes to specifically the property i think intent intent okay. it needs That's good. like you you have to understand what it is that you're using the property for is this just my is this my home Am I going to stay there for five years, mm -hmm. three years, seven years, 10 years? Like, it, am I going to grow a family? Granted, things change. Yeah, like, yeah. Life happens. But what is the plan? Like, are you, going to, are you going to be there, be in it for a few years, and then rent it out? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Let's do it. Fine. I, I, I know what to look for now. Because now I'm not looking for a home that has, that has specific features for something that is planned five years from now. Like if you're, if you're having a kid in six months, I'm not, if, if, if you're having a kid in, in six months, for example, wife's pregnant or something right. like that, and you're going to be in the home for three years, I'm planning for a three-year-old. I'm right. not planning for a five, it's a 10 great year old. Point. That's so, a great point. so you have like to that. like, okay, so then what's, what's the dynamic going to be in the house? Kids probably going to be in the same bedroom as you. More than like, so we're looking for a bigger master. We're not looking for four bedrooms. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking for maybe two or maybe three bedrooms. You're probably going to be like, oh, but that's in my budget. Yeah, but do you have to use your whole budget? Right. I'm not in the business of you purchasing that property. And I'm going to be like, yeah, they're going to sell that. Yep. I'm going to make, they're going to make some equity. And then I'm going to help them buy another house. And they're probably going to sell that one. And then they're going to use me. Yep. And then I'm going to help them buy the next house. I'm getting six different deals from this one person. No, no, no. That's, that's not my intent. That'd be great, but it's like right. it's, it, it is more money in my pocket, but that's but not it the intent. Help the individual. No, right. no, because then, mm -hmm. because then I become the bad guy, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be the bad guy. And you and you go back to also why what also causes people to think why they don't actually need a realtor to begin with mm -hmm. is because they look at that individual as the bad guy. Yeah, they make it's, the sale. You're just the salesman. You're just out to make your commission. And granted, there are some people like that, not just on the real estate side, on the lending side, in everything. There's like we we another common car salesman and mm -hmm. mechanics. My mechanic told me something was wrong with my car, and it wasn't something was acting. There's there's bad apples in absolutely every walk of life, mm -hmm. which we all know that we're all adults here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that one of the biggest stigmas that I've seen where it is wrapped around is heavily on real estate agents, as people wonder. They're just showing me a house. I, I don't need them. Yeah. And there's so much more to that. There's so much to say that. behind that. Yeah. Like, so I think we're on the top five least trusted professions. Oh, cool. Right next to po yeah. like political leaders, you know, like politicians. So that's great. Yeah. But, and we're actually. Are you guys above or below? We're, I think we're below. I think politi well, politicians is number one. Meaning they didn't trust them the, the least. They, they trusted they, them the least. They trusted yeah. them the least. Okay. And then we're, I think, like four or five. Okay. We're okay. actually le less trusted than used car salesmen. 
Wow. You want to be wary of the the agent that says when you ask them like, "Hey, is this a is this a good one? Is this a good house? Should we make an offer?" Yeah. Should we make an offer on this house? Yeah. What about this one? Yeah. This is a great house. I love this house. It's perfect for you. You, you like I come up with problems in the house and I I not not just be not just to be that guy is like I'm always mm-hmm. looking for a problem, but I want you to be aware of everything that can and might go wrong mm-hmm. like hey just so you know house one had an old roof so you got to pay attention to that That's so a good point. like five years from now you're probably gonna have to replace that it's twenty five thousand dollars at the max maybe 15 15 or twenty five thousand dollars so make sure you have that in your budget if you don't have it in your budget then we shouldn't even look at that this next one it the backyard wasn't done but mm-hmm. that's a clean slate but that's also an expensive slate to yeah. to, to like right, to right. fill. So keep that in mind to make it the way you want it to be. It's probably not going to be the best bet. And this one is new construction. The issue with that is that you're going to be the first owner. So any of the problems that are going to happen to the house, it's going to happen to you, mm-hmm. and it's going to happen in the first five years. Yep. That's why they have a five year warranty. So like, that's a good point. And it, I bought yeah. a brand new house, um, and I had quite a few things yeah. that yeah. needed to be changed in like year one. It was about a year, a little over year one. So yeah, and it depends house. on the builder. Yeah. Depends on the builder. Like if, it, like if I trust the builder or not. Mm-hmm. If it's a builder that's giving you a great deal, but I don't really trust them, I'm gonna let you know. Like there's there's plenty of builders back in California where where I was before, mm-hmm. where I would completely avoid the builder. And but I'll I'll be upfront with the with my clients mm-hmm. like, hey, I don't trust these people because they've given an inferior product to a previous client, or. That I, I don't trust them because yeah. they honestly aren't letting me into the properties. So the, how, yeah. how am I going to protect you in the first place if they're not allowing me in the property? The last part I wanted to kind of um, pivot to as well is from my perspective as a lender on the importance of working with a VA knowledgeable realtor is also going to be their ability to structure your deal by collaborating with the lender. Especially in a time like this, you guys have seen me make videos talking about how this is a phenomenal time to take advantage of making an offer that is not as aggressive, but more in the favor of you asking for basically the Brinks truck. I'm like, hey, now's the time to ask, right? Mm-hmm. Like you go, you look at now, you're looking at anywhere between one to three people making an offer on the same house, depending on when that house is listed versus rewind three years ago, you could be looking at 15 to 35 people making an offer on that house. So you think about what that looks like in these situations now is you have the ability to ask for seller credit. You have the ability to ask for the seller to pay off a bill I've seen or have all these other things that could help be more advantageous for you as the home buyer versus just saying the house is listed at 400,000. I'm offering 400,000 and that's it. There is so much more to writing an offer than just putting a purchase price in. There's details that can go into it contingencies and other things that can actually be more protections for you and less protections for the seller. And I mean, I know you're as someone that has represented sellers mm-hmm. and buyers, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you can attest to a little bit of that. 100%. Like I remember during the pandemic, I was making offers $100,000 over asking. And it was, people will say like, oh, it was a great time for realtors. I hated it. It was not, yeah. It, it was, was not. it was the worst time because yeah. I, 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 I tell the story all the time where I was helping a, a, a service member that I served with. I served with him. I was showing him single family homes, two story, 2,200 square foot, beautiful home in a beautiful area close mm-hmm. to San Diego. And then by the like end of the six months that we were searching, mm-hmm. which he never bought anything, we were looking at condos. And it was the same payment. It was the same price. Just because it changed. In, in six months, it, it, it changed that much mm-hmm. because we were getting priced out. So this is the worst time. Yeah. Like I, I hated that time. Now it's a little bit more of we can play with a lot more things. Yeah. Um, like my my scenario, I was able to get credits for my home and get a discount off of the purchase price for the home that I purchased. And I went in for like only like That's a crazy. couple grand out of pocket. That's pretty crazy. And it like we we just negotiated. We're, we're about to close in the next two weeks on a property. Our client actually. Um, yeah. 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 So not only did we work on getting a price lowered, Mm -hmm. which it was already lowered by the builder by Mm $90,000 and we got them a 
appliances, we got them extra $50,000 in nice. upgrades. In upgrades for the house? For the house. That's awesome. Done. Like, removed. And that's the art of the, no the negotiation aspect of it yeah. versus just saying, oh, it's 400? Here's, okay. Yeah, take, yeah, Here, sure. Yeah, 400, make 400,000. So there you have it. The importance of having a VA knowledgeable realtor can be astronomical in regards to how your overall experience is when you are buying a house, whether that's for the first time, second, third, however many times it is, it's extremely important to have that if you are using the VA home loan benefit. If you wanna connect with a VA knowledgeable realtor, click the link down below in the description. I'd be happy to connect you with a realtor in your local market that truly does understand the VA home loan benefit. Last thing I wanna leave you with, which is the most important thing, Jesus loves you and he paid the ultimate price for your life. So if you turn to him, trust in him and believe in him, he has a beautiful plan and purpose for you.